Crathis is one of the most magnificent and best preserved 16th century castles in Scotland. It was home to the Burnett family for a staggering 14 generations. You could definitely say they left their mark on the landscape. The castle was completed in 1596, but the story really starts a lot earlier, back in 1308. Then, this whole area was part of a forest rich in boar and deer, ripe for hunting. Robert the Bruce would come to visit here and recuperate from the rigours of battle. He loved it so much so that he made this area part of the royal forest. One of the king's great supporters was a local man called Alexander de Bernard. Robert repaid Alexander's loyalty by giving him the lands and the post of King's Forester. Alexander built a small island fort on the nearby lock of Lays. The family moved there and stayed there for the next 250 years, where their name changed from Bernard to Burnet. They weren't the most ambitious of families or volatile, but they were respected for their sophistication and mild manner. And eventually their fortunes grew. They were able to move away from the marshy island of Lays to build the home of their dreams. Work on Crathis started in 1553, but unfortunately construction was held up because of the troubled period during the time of Mary, Queen of Scots. And it took another 40 odd years for the building to be completed. It was certainly worth the wait. Small round towers with conical roofs sit beside overhanging turrets, giving it a romantic, chateau-like appearance. There's exquisite stone decoration around the eaves and where the turrets protrude. Each side of the building is different and it looks more like a fairy tale castle than a medieval fortress. But appearances can be deceiving. The castle's design incorporates many cunning defence strategies. First of all, the walls at the ground level are much thicker than they are at the roof height, making this building very, very solid, almost as if it was like a buttress on the side of a medieval cathedral. If you manage to burn down this heavy studded oak door, look what you encountered. One huge, great big iron yet. Now, of course, in the heat of the moment, in battle, you'd be coming in here, charging, raging away with your axe above your head or a sword above your head to deliver a blow. But you couldn't. It would be knocking these low ceilings. So the defender of the castle would have the upper hand and he'd thrust into you. Also, supposing you did charge the tower and you came running up here, this spiral staircase goes in a clockwise direction. Most soldiers would have been right-handed. You couldn't hold your sword or your axe in this hand because the spiral staircase is turning clockwise. So you'd have to hold your axe or your sword in this hand to try and attack the defender, leaving your torso completely open. So the man above definitely had the upper hand because he could thrust down into you. Also, the 11th step, this one here, the riser is a lot higher than the rest of them. And that's designed to trip you up as you are running upstairs. Now, I don't call that cunning. I call that sly. But Crathis is perhaps most famous for its gardens. No one is sure exactly how old they are, although some of the trees and topiary have been dated back to the early 1700s. And it's a passion that the family have continued in more recent years. Traditionally, the garden would have supplied the castle with fresh fruit, herbs and vegetables. But over the years, it's moved away from a traditional kitchen garden to more of an arts and crafts style garden. There are eight little individual displays here, each with their own theme. And as you see them now is how they were created by the 13th Baronet of Lays, Sir James Burnett, and his wife, Sybil, who started to create these compartmentalised displays back in the 1920s, when it was all the rage. For me, the iconic June borders are the most exciting part of the gardens, so-called because of the time of the year. They were best viewed. Lady Burnett first laid out the beds in the 1930s. She took much inspiration from landscape architect Gertrude Jekyll and had a real flair for design and colour coordination. Now, 
Now, although the Burnett family still have a very close relationship with this magnificent castle, it has been in the safe hands of the National Trust ever since the 1950s. But today, it still remains a home steeped in the dedication and the love that all those generations of Burnets have lavished on it. And I must say, I hope my little visit today has inspired you to take a look for yourself. It is open to the public at certain times of the year, and it is a wonderful day out. Thank you.